Dumb men aren't looking for anything logical. They can't be bought, bullied, reasoned, or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. Broly is the Achilles of Dragon Ball Z, the legendary warrior of mythology foretold. More on that in a moment, but why the quote from the Dark Knight at the top? Some villains can be reasoned with, but ones that can't be are scary beyond belief. There's no bartering, no monologues, only evil, only carnage. As I have been journeying through the DBZ films again, this one has struck a chord with me once more. I have always loved Broly as a character in any incarnation. He's just cool and epic, but there's more to it. When playing in the backyard as a child, my friends would always want me to be him and I obliged. He's a large blonde guy, as am I, tall and big. His movie first came out in 1993, which is the year I was born, and his voice actor in the dub is from the same town that I was born in. I also missed the chance to meet him one time on the Star Trek Continue set and was sent this. Hi Curry, it's your brother, and I have someone here who wants to say hello. Hi Curry, it's not your brother. <laughs> But I'm hanging out with him, and uh, where are you, man? We're having a great time on the bridge of the Enterprise. Your whole family's here but you. Uh, you're the Broly fan, is that right? Kakarot. Sorry you can't be here, man. Look, whatever your thoughts on Vic are, this was pretty cool. It made my inner fanboy scream, and he does an amazing job voicing the characters that he does. Needless to say, I formed a connection with the character in these ways as a child, so some of this is obviously nostalgia. My biggest flaw with this film is the rushed nature of the final portion of the big fight. It always has been and it always will be. It is pretty easy to just dismiss it as straight up anticlimactic, while remaining visually stunning. That's absolutely true and will remain a flaw forever. However, there's an attempt to make it more than meets the eye, which makes it forgivable for me on this rewatch. So bear with me. Broly is the unrestrained horror, the rampaging Hulk, the horrifying doomsday, the awe-inspiring force of nature. Anytime I rewatch this, that pure terror is amplified. Now that evil isn't without some pathos. Heroes and villains aren't necessarily born, they can be made. While the reboot gives different context to Broly and remolds him as a hero, here is much more tragic. Instead of growing up in isolation, he's caused incredible discomfort from Goku's crying as a child, which was unnatural due to sharing in Bardock's visions. On top of feeling off due to insane power that can cause insanity at birth, also in the midst of all this, being near mortally wounded and betrayed, left for dead, and then instinctively surviving by the exploding planet with his father by sheer will. Some may find that origin silly, but I find that unique set of circumstances the perfect scenario for a basket case of unchecked PTSD and what it can do to a person. Broly could only make sense of his own power, express his remarkable grief through the terrorization of everything around him, almost like a fugue state. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, especially if unchecked and abused and unguided without kindness. Paragus gave up on his son. Instead of teaching him to fight through the evil and become more from it, he ignored it by using it, abusing Broly for his own needs. And this made everything worse. Broly had a darkness festering in him, a creature of rage lurking beneath the surface looking for any excuse to break free, created by circumstances too nihilistic to imagine. And Paragus nurtured this further into a near unstoppable monster. When he finally hears Kakrot's name and senses his aura, it digs beneath deep the controlled creature under the raging monster and gives birth to a demon of raw hate. One who continues to dive further into the abyss, drawing strength from it. Getting stronger. Yes, much stronger. At this point, his motives, upbringing, and agenda cannot be clearer, and suddenly they don't matter to him anymore. Broly is the Achilles of Dragon Ball Z, the legendary warrior of mythology foretold. Arguably driven mad by trauma, manipulated by kings and fathers, bored by no challenge in battle, takes down the respected prince's pride, Vegeta slash Hector, outclassing him in front of his kingdom, Troy, and the ruins of New Vegeta, and quite literally dragging his body through the streets. Broly is an honest take about classical mythological giants, true absolute power and skill, until he wasn't. Achilles had his weakness, his Achilles heel. Broly has his weak spot on his stomach, from the wound that destroyed his life as a newborn, despite being born with tremendous power. Paris, the prince who was seen as a joke, 
who only wanted to seek out women slash love, but viciously saves his kingdom in Kakarot. The champion non-Prince Saiyan seen as a clown by Vegeta, Hector, who only wants a good challenge to defend the earth at all costs in the dub. While Paris sometimes represents the cowardly side of things in some interpretations, I also see him as the prince who isn't taken seriously yet vanquished the ultimate foe. Here we have Mr. Son Goku, a joke of a Saiyan born in the lowest of low classes, surpassing the prince and all others consistently. While Broly gained power from the abyss of suffering, Goku draws it from hope. Kakarot's fist becomes the metaphorical arrow to Broly's abdomen, his heel. His wound that began his pain also ends it here. That is cinematic poetry. While Broly hits me on such a cathartic level for some reason, I'm so glad this one actually feels like a film to let me dwell on all of it. At 72 minutes, there's ample time for backstory, fleshing out character motivations, and humor, which is pretty good, with just a few out of place jokes that feel like an early attempt at the MCU formula, for better or worse. Everyone's reactions to Broly are well earned. Goku is excited at first, then deadly serious when he realizes what's up. Gohan is hopelessly naive, and Trunks is skeptical of all of it from the start. Piccolo knows Broly cannot go unchecked any longer and has to be put down, but Vegeta is the most surprising of all. I feel for him. He finds what he thinks are like minded Saiyans, finally giving him the respect as the prince, or even the king, he deserves in what? It's all a farce. Paying for the sins of his father, slapping him in the face with his own prideful heritage. And on top of all of that, the true legendary Super Saiyan stands in front of him, dwarfing Kakarot, his mortal rival, his own son, and the strongest warriors he knows, including himself. Deep down, Vegeta knows he's inferior. It all comes to a head here as he completely, seemingly out of character, loses all sense of hope, paralyzed by fear. How perfect is it that Piccolo, another former bad guy and rival of Goku, pulls him out of his rut. Vegeta overcomes his own fear, replaced with pride, only to be proven correct. Then in a rare instance, he sets aside his pride to trust friends, helping save the day. It's a well done contained art here and a great extension for Piccolo as well. And speaking of Mr. Green Batman, at this point, Piccolo is just stalking Gohan, waiting to shoot a blast out of his way. What a guy, you're Namek. Namekian. The animation is astounding, yet I noticed the crop ratio of the original aspect ratio is a problem at times here, and I think some sound effects are missing. It's possible I remembered wrong. The soundtrack is one of my favorites. When Pantera plays over arguably one of the coolest and spine-tingling transformations ever, chills are induced. It amplifies the definitely one-sided but still fantastic fights. Broly cannot be stopped, yet Goku is an immovable object. You could argue it's the trope of anime, it's all power of friends saved the day. Goku may have punched him in the spot he was stabbed, but they could have extended that fight. The stakes were crazy sure, but another minute of exchanging blows and maybe Goku noticing the weak point and continually striking it to weaken it further would have been great and showed Goku smarts. Then do the final blow. That way Broly doesn't just go down in one hit. Maybe there's a way to fan edit that with the new one, but the runtime was already so long, so they could have dialed back the beatdowns if needed. That's a small price to pay for the wonderful rest of the film that we get. But given the aforementioned character moments within them, I'm willing to let that slide. I love this movie. I give Broly, the legendary Super Saiyan, five out of five stars. Thanks for checking out this review and analysis, more video essay type style. Please hit the like button, subscribe for more content like this. We've got another video coming on Super Broly coming very soon. And remember, always look for the good.